It's 6.30 on the June bank holiday weekend. We're in Tralee in County Kerry in Ireland for one of our lockdown videos for today. And I'm going to take you on a trip down memory lane and go take you again back to the 50s when we were growing up in this area. And the places we could get to on our bicycles because that was the mode of transport at the time. On the odd occasion we got a drive here in the car. This is in a place called Bally Row on the Trilly Artfert Banner Beach Road. And we would come over the bridge here and we'd as it would make the jump over the bridge, the car would bounce and we'd all be excited inside the car, laughing to ourselves. What hilarity we had for simple things. Although I'm going to take you to the places where we could get at by bike, we're standing here on the old, looking down on the old Dingle, or Tralee, to Feenet railway track, where the old track used to go on. There is, um, there are renovations going on to this track now to turn it into a walk and cycle path connecting Tralee and the Port of Fina. The old bridge is standing here, now overgrown, and hopefully this lovely stonework on this bridge will be exposed in the near future as the renovation and the transformation of this railway line into a walkway uh, gets, uh, gets proceeds towards its conclusion. And as I look here again, and now I'm looking towards the mountains in Feenet, we came here on trains in the 50s, and I can't remember, my memory fades me as to know, as to remember, was it steam trains or diesel trains we came here on? But we did come here on Sundays, there was excursions to the beach. The trains used to be packed. I'm also reminded this morning because a little down the road here there's a friend who we knew growing up in Oak Park, Donald Green, and Donald was a great friend of Joe Enright. Joe, of course, is the author of children's stories, uh, lives in Tralee in Alderwood Road and has some had some books published and more in the pipeline from what I can gather, but Joe uh, told the story of himself and his friend Donald Green and their other friend Oliver Switzer, Ali Switzer, uh, searching for caves in Donald's garden in Racecourse Road in the early 50s. And then excitedly one, one of the excavators, one of their adventurers found the cave and shouted back he had the cave. And after some minutes of poking around inside in the cave, he hollered to pull him out. In actual fact, it wasn't the cave he had, he was inside in the septic tank of Donald Green's father's house. What excitement we had. The first stop on our journey of our bikes, on our bikes at that time, of course, was the well at Clutterbrine graveyard. We'd park our bikes and we'd, <clears throat> there was a little incline here which we'd come down and we'd come off the road here into the well. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the water flowing, although we can't see into the well properly. But at that time, we could see the stone well. And uh, the water here was as cool and as clear coming from the bowels of the earth. We would stop and of course next door in the graveyard is where the Rose of Tralee is buried, that famous song by Willem Pembroke Molchenok, who fed the merchant prince who fell in love with the pauper's daughter Mary O'Connor. And of course Mary is buried in Clutterbrine graveyard just outside Tralee the object of his affections. As we arrived here in the Spa village, the first little 
village we met on our way to the our ultimate destination. Of course, our destinations changed. Uh, the depending on what way the tide was, and the tide is out very far today, and it it actually it it is quite possible because Saint Brendan in the fourth fifth century left here on his travels towards the Americas it's quite possible that he crossed here the, because the tide is so far out this morning it almost connects the land on one side of the Tralee Bay to the land on the other side of the Tralee Bay on the Dingle side and it's quite possible that St. Brendan walked across here when he was going on his travels and in the 50s of course cricket wasn't played in Ireland maybe in some of the upper crust boarding schools and Trinity College in Dublin and places like that. There are many cricket clubs in Ireland and the this is the headquarters of the County Kerry Cricket Club. Of course we Dave Ramsey in Tralee is the local solicitor. Dennis Moylan and Gordon Revington spearheading the effort to bring cricket to Kerry quite successfully. The, you may not have heard of the Wild Atlantic Way, but the Wild Atlantic Way is a route that stretches from all down the west coast of Ireland, from the tip of Donegal down to the tip of the tail of Cork. And this is our part of the Wild Atlantic Way. The Atlantic comes in here to Tralee Bay. And what, how blessed we are to live in such a wonderful spot all accessible we're on our bikes in the 50s when we were growing up as i've said many times we were we've had the benefit of having this adventure playground made and fashioned and hewn out of rock and ice to make what is the kingdom of kerry and as we walk through the village on this beautiful June morning. It's the 1st of June and when we're filming this and we see the flowers here grown and the village of course is kept by the local volunteer community which is very strong here. What a magnificently clean and lovely village the spa is. And of course the well-known Oyster Tavern under management of Jim McGrath, uh, internationally renowned restaurant and bar. A visit to the spa wouldn't be complete without a visit to the affable Jim McGrath's premises. And in the 50s, of course, we were too young to know the rudiments of drinking but the this bar was owned by the Lynch family. Anya Lynch is still here in the village and can be she works from time to time in Jim McGrath's. And, uh, Anya's father ran the bar here for many years and of course at that time the licensing laws didn't permit drinking at certain times. However there was a special dispensation. Uh, the A traveller had a license to to drink at whatever time he felt he needed to and to be considered a traveller you had to be three miles from your own home and of course this being that distance from Tralee town people would walk out here along the beach and they would come here to Lynch's pub for a drink and drink quite in the knowledge that they couldn't be prosecuted for breaking the law. And a little bit down the road from the Oyster Tavern, on the way to Feenet, is another wonderful restaurant, the Spa Seafoods. And during this lockdown period, when all bars and restaurants are closed, uh, I believe that the Spa Seafoods is doing a thriving business in click and collect. And they also have a retail sales fish 
outlet here that they, when we're all back in business again, uh, it's a lovely place if you're staying locally to pick up your fish and take it home and cook it. With the tide out this morning now here in the spa, it doesn't look like a place but that you could go swimming. But when the tide was in, it was a wonderful place to stop here depending on the time we had available to us that uh, we would come down here if the evenings were getting short late summer and we'd swim here and of course we'd uh, it, it brings to mind a story of my friend Frank who I've often mentioned in my videos Frank Hennessy Frank when he was in hospital and he had been diagnosed as being quite ill he rang me one Sunday and he wanted to come out of the hospital for a couple of hours and this is the first place he wanted to come because it reminded him of our childhood and we I, I brought him out here and we sat on the beach for a while and we and he told me that uh, he actually he said to me when the doctor told him he was sick he asked the doctor would he live to be 19 the doctor who's a local consultant said well, do you drink? And Frank said, no. And he said, do you smoke? And Frank said, no. And he said, do you go out late at night chasing women? And Frank said, no. And he looked at Frank and he shook his head and he said, what in the name of God do you want to live to be 90 for? That was Frank in his moments of, of sadness. He still found something to laugh about. Of course, we came here also to pick seaweed and... Uh, Dillisk was a, a sea kind of a, a weed that you could dry out and eat and of course there were the periwinkles they were a shell uh, like a little snail a little sea snail and we'd take them home and we'd boil them and we'd then pick the, sh the snail out of the shell and eat them they were quite delicious and of course local local gardeners came down here to get seaweed for their garden. My neighbour Cyril Lewis for many years Cyril would come here and he'd gather seaweed and if you've seen the the field with Richard Harris, Richard Harris used to harvest seagrass and spread it on the field. The wild Atlantic way isn't so wild this morning, but however, it's still a beautiful place to be. And of course, if the tide wasn't right here in the spa, we would park our bikes against the walls or the poles and we would go into the local shop here. And as you see, we're on the road to the Tralee Golf Club as well. And the shop here, we would replenish our supplies with whatever little money we had. Bottle of lemonade or... Nash's, of course, were a Limerick company for making lemonade and mineral water. And of course, that time there was no such things as buying bottles of water. Water was freely available everywhere you looked. The best of water. And of course, we'd get on our bikes again and travel on towards Feenet to our next port of call which was Oyster Hall opposite what is now the Spa National School there was of course the Healy family lived and we would stop here and watch them playing tennis on the tennis court in the front lawn and of course Mrs Healy I if I can remember, Etna, I think, was her name. She was very involved in musical society and the musical arts field here in Tralee. And then we'd get on our bikes again and travel on. And as we'd come around the corner here with the hill on our bikes down the bed bend between the spa and Kilfenora village, we'd come down the hill here and, of course, our next destination was Oyster Hall, where the little wall runs further down there. Sitting on the little wall here at the Oyster Hall this morning and I suppose Oyster Hall got its name from the oyster beds, the rich oyster beds in Phoenix Harbour and Tralee Bay. 
Of course, the oyster beds were put here by the Toomey family who were merchants and shipping magnets, I suppose you'd call them. At the time, they brought wines and spirits and from all over the world. And they had ships coming in here to, to Tralee Bay. The last of the Toomeys that ran the business here was Terry Toomey. Terry lived in Castle Countess, Castle Countess in Tralee. His family are spread all over the globe now. The, as you see, the concrete wall down there, the tide would come in and uh, the, it would buffer up against the wall there and the water would be four or five feet deep there. Ideal for trainee swimmers. I suppose tadpoles, they'd call us now. Uh, I was never able to swim much, but swimming off of here was very exciting and safe. It doesn't look very appetizing now to swim from here, but and at that time the the swimming here was marvelous, depending on the way the tide was. As you go about your travels uh, throughout Ireland, you may come across little timber Celtic crosses like this. They were put up where incidents, armed incidents took place and where maybe somebody lost their lives. And frequently you'd see one or two where people lost their lives in accidents and the families would direct them. This is to, uh, although the, it's well worn now, the John O'Sullivan. And it says, just died in, and I can't read the rest of it, but there's VOL, which would signify that he was a, maybe a volunteer. You know, one of the, maybe killed during the Republican struggle. And we look out towards Mount Brandon and off on our bikes again towards Fenet. Next little village, of course, is Kilfenora. We're here now in the little village of Kilfenora. Between the spa and Fenet, the port. And we look down and around and we see, of course, here on our right is the Tankard restaurant, of course, run by the Jerry O'Sullivan for many years. Jerry sadly now passed away. The bar and restaurant when it's open again, run by the O'Sullivan family. Another great place to eat on your way through this little segment of the Wild Atlantic Way as we head as we headed towards Phoenix on our bikes. I've just taken a little stop off here now outside Kilfenora to show you the the old Fina Trilly railway line in the process of being um, turned from a railway line to a greenway, a walkway and cycleway connecting Trilly and Fina. And it, were it not for this lockdown period we're going through, this would almost be finished now, but work had to be suspended because of the current virus restrictions. And we see, of course, the the old railway line that was taken up. And I'm reminded of a story here that someone told me lately that their uncle uh, drove a train, a steam train here from from Tralee to Fenet and as he was passing his sister's house, her aunt's house, he would shovel off a couple of shovels of coal to keep her going for the, till the next time he passed. The, the all these people are long gone of course the lines here may be put down how many years ago as to today and how many goods trains travelled over them from Tralee to Phoenix bringing coal timber uh, milling stuff in and out towards Phoenix and of course now the only stuff that's brought in and out of Phoenix is fish 
the fishing boats of Phoenix, and of course the Lieber Crane Factory in Killarney, the cranes travel on this road, piggybacking on the backs of lorries. We are now looking down at a beach, one of our other beaches we'd swim at, Flavins. And it, of course the entrance to Flavins is now overgrown and blocked, so I'm taking the picture from some distance away from the Tralee side of Flavins Beach. And again, depending on the tidal conditions, we would park our bikes here and run into the sea. And the story that comes to mind here, of course, in this... Uh, in our teenage years, one of our friends came here and he had been anxious to travel to England, to go to England on an adventure and to work and his parents wouldn't allow him to go. He was only 16 or 17 at the time. And he came here one Sunday afternoon and parked his bike and left his clothes folded on the beach. And it gave the impression, of course, to people who found his clothes and bike that he had gone into the sea and had not come out. And there was a search went on for him. And some time after he, somebody met him, somebody from Tralee met him in England. That was his way of escaping. I won't mention his name because we've all done things in our teenage years that we wouldn't want to hear about now. It would be a little embarrassing. I would ask people who comment on this video not to uh, mention the name. One f a friend from our youth. We finally reach our destination. Fiend village and on my right as I go in presently the the Irish flag lies still or fairly still on the flagpole just to remind us if we need a reminding that Fiend is quite a republican village this is where the gun running ship in the 70s and 80s the Marie Dan sailed from and I am open to correction. I think it was returned here as well when they were under arrest. The, during the Civil War, of course, as well, that the, the uh, free, uh, boatload of Free State troops, um, pro-treaty, uh, arrived here in Fina to take back the town from the anti-treaty forces, the town of Tralee in the marched from here to the town of Tralee to engage in a battle there. Sentiments still exist in this village of those times. The sign post here advising us of the ways to the different parts of the Fenet village, or Fenid Island, where supposedly St. Brendan was born, and of course the Heritage Park on the pier dedicated also to St. Brendan, one of Ireland's greatest saints, the curry man. We'll deal with St. Brendan on another day. There are of course several places listed as the birthplace of St. Brendan. And of course, as we arrive down the hill, the last few hundred yards on our freewheeling on our bikes, uh, down to Phoenix, where the pier starts, of course. And the, nowadays as well, you can, that time you'd get an ice cream cone, maybe if you were lucky, a bottle of lemonade. The West End restaurant is here now, another great place to eat on your journeys. And of course over across the road where the boat is parked we can see the footbridge over the then railway line. And this is where we disembarked the train, excursion train from Tralee on those Sundays. I think the journey cost us a half a crown, two shillings and sixpence if my memory serves me right. Somebody will correct me, I'm sure. And we didn't delay any time, we rushed to the beach. 
couple of hours of fun and excitement. And by this time next year, hopefully, we'll be able to travel back here on our bikes in relative safely again through the Trilly Fiennet Greenway when it's finished and we'll be able again once more to park our bikes and run down to the beach for a swim. Trilly Bay Maritime Centre, there's a wonderful marina and boat club here further down the pier and if another place to eat right on the pier here in Phoenix and of course your travels on the this section of the wild Atlantic way you certainly won't go hungry for good restaurants the, we'd fish off the pier here with homemade fishing rods we buy bamboos in town and we buy the makings of the fishing rod in Benner's hardware shop in Bridge Street in Tralee small Benner's you could get the the eyes for putting the fishing line through and you could tape them onto the pole and little reels, cheap reels and we'd have great fun here fishing off the pier. I can't remember if I caught anything or not. I don't think my success as a fisherman can be measured in what I caught. In the, we're here on the beach now and we're going to walk along the a uh, lovely walkway here that leads to the bathing slip and brings us closer to the lighthouse. As I walk uh, along the pathway towards the diving board, where the diving board was when we were growing up, I am has a field full of cows on my right with a sign. The field in front of me is full of rabbits. I don't know if you can see them on the video, but I'm reminded also that we rabbits were eaten in Ireland in the 50s, 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and into the time they got to the spread of the rabbit disease, Mexima tortoise, which uh, made the rabbits so sick that you couldn't eat them and nearly wiped out the whole rabbit population of Ireland at the time. I'm sitting here now on one of the lovely seats at the the, the Fiennet bathing slip and in the 50s when we were growing up there was a a diving board here and dressing rooms. Very rudimentary at the time, but we didn't need any sophistication. The, there is a local committee now that keeps this place going. Of course, Billy Ryle, who wrote a book about swimming in the Fiennet area and the slipway. Billy, a local school teacher, is very involved in the swimming club here. And, Names I can remember from long ago were the Fitzgibbon brothers, Ronnie and Noel, and David Quinlan, and David Slattery, and Connie Foley, the whistling postman from Strand Street in Tralee. And some of my friends here, are, they come here to Phoenix for a daily swim, the whole year round. Dennis Cronin in Tralee, the family, the snackery. Dennis swims here quite a bit, as does Ed Eddie Stack, Eddie Barney Stack, and David Magnor, Paul Prendergast, the Tralee accountant, who is heading towards semi-retirement. He wants to spend more time in this lovely place. We're looking out in Mount Brandon in, on the Dingle Peninsula. Mount Brandon, of course, named after the local saint here, St. Brendan. And of course, across the bay then we have the Sleeve Mish mountain rains starting almost at sea level and rising up to Carcunry and all along towards Tralee and on to Castlemaine and on to Fireys where it comes to ground again. What wonderful memories!
thank God for all memories intact. And before I leave this wonderful place and leave these wonderful memories behind, I just want to remember the great channel swimmer Elaine Delane Burroughs or Elaine Burroughs Delane the daughter of a school friend of mine who her mother spent time in infants class in Moirewell with me Vornine Flaherty and of course Shawnee Burroughs Shawnee the great basketball player in Tralee they have both Elaine of course trains here for her channel swims successfully swam the channel in the last 12 months that's where i leave our memories of the 50s for today